going to do a quick poll. Who thinks that overall porn has a negative effect on society? Yeah. And who thinks overall that it has a positive effect? <laughs> and who's somewhere between the middle? I wanted to find out whether porn is really harmful and whether the, the things I'd heard about porn, like it causes men to, to treat women badly, and in particular that the biggest story about porn was that, that it's linkage with sexual violence and that somehow, somewhere, there's a myth, there's, a, there's a, a link that porn makes men who watch it more likely to commit sexual violence. I, I got particularly interested in that and I looked at the, the research and found out that actually the reverse was true. The problems that surround sex work and, 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 and for me and the, prop, the negative attitudes towards it is mainly because of a whole, an entire social stigma we have about the industry and about sex work and about pornography and, and I think this even goes into how then men relate to pornography and then relate to the partners that they have. That, you know, we live in a society where sex work and sex are stigmatized and we don't talk about them very clearly. We don't talk about consent very clearly. So porn is like rising more and more because of the proliferation of the internet. You can't escape the internet. So everyone's seeing it more and more. It's not like it's being produced more or it's being even more aggressive than it ever was. It's the proliferation of people being able to access it. I just want to make it really clear here. I don't... I'm not really that interested in the moral debate. I absolutely respect the work that you do and absolutely believe in protection for the women that are in the, that industry. Um, but saying that pornography, addiction, compulsion, whatever, doesn't exist, or if you do believe it is, you're somehow anti-porn, is like saying you're anti-alcohol if you believe in alcoholism. Yeah? We don't disagree that a lot of people have problems with alcohol. The vast majority manage to drink socially, maybe a little too much on some occasions, but we're not trying to ban it. And I see the same issue with pornography. And I suppose what really, really frustrates me is how much we get caught in the moral debates around pornography and we actually forget about the health issues that so many people are struggling with. And so many people who do struggle with porn addiction get labelled as being weak, pathetic, paedophiles even, yeah, potential rapists. And it's just rubbish you know rather than umbrella in it under one category how we can use it whether it's an educational purpose for sexual pleasure or whether it's something that could be used as as a tool for something else in the future and i think that until we until we we like to blame porn because that's where it is up front but we need to take a step back and see what's going on behind the scenes why aren't our parents educating their children why aren't schools doing more to allow pupils to work to understand about sexual pleasures rather than sex as just procreation, but also how to, to incorporate a relationship in their day-to-day -day lives, how to fill in their tax return. <laughs> you know, it's, it's these sort of things that we need to be looking at rather than asking the same questions over and over and over again. We all know where we are, realistically, we all know, but what actually needs to be done is, is the people like ourselves here taking that step forward, opening the conversation to, hang on, this is what you see where the problem is, but actually, if you want to go back and take the, the problem to its root, Education is a massive way forward to be able to develop people and the next generation to be able to watch porn healthy, safely, and in the comfort of their own home in a consensual manner. Most porn out there isn't from the porn industry. Most porn out there is made by people at home with their partners and published to, um, to, to user-generated content sites and, and so on. So the porn industry is, is much less powerful than people would like to, to imagine. I Can think. I make a point real quick? There is no porn industry. There's no union as for workers at all. There's union for bosses like Jerry was talking about, but there's no network that you could define and pin down as an industry. There's no industry regulations. There's no guidelines. It's, it's, it's basically, if you can imagine, just a network of co cottage industries that changes in diff each different country you're in. We're not having these conversations and certainly not with young people because if adults are squeamish about sex the idea of talking to young people about it is even more so. Um, then I suppose our question is does the porn industry have a responsibility to the next generation because they are going to be the next generation of consumers as well and how do we support young people in navigating that when they don't necessarily have someone to turn to to talk about it or being given spaces 
bring it back to young people again, young people in the UK, sex crimes have gone up in schools by 255%. Sure. Mm -hmm. So they, these are our young people. Mm -hmm. We know that porn has an effect, uh, and we know that social media has an effect on friendships, and probably Tinder has an effect on, on, on relationships, and so on. We kind of need to govern how the effect is, and whether it might be good or bad, or in which case it might be good, in which case it might be bad. It all comes down to education, first, first of all. But if we want to make porn more progressive and more, more diverse, I think what we don't need to do is just trying to blame it, shame it, censor it. And, and the thing about age verification, age verification sounds fine because it puts requirements on websites to verify the ages that they use, and it's a bit expensive, but it kind of can be done. The problem is that 1% of sites in the world are going to implement age verification. The other 99% aren't. And the government and the law also specifies that those sites can be blocked. So the, for, for the first time in British history, there is a, an internet censor. The BBFC has been appointed the role of internet censor. But they call themselves the age verification regulator. But they're the internet censor. They're ready to go. And I'm, I reckon they're waiting for Brexit because it, it would be illegal under EU law. Yeah. So revenge porn, which actually by some is seen as an outdated term, non-consensual pornography, or even better yet, image-based sexual abuse, which um, is for most appropriate, but a, a little too clinical, I think, for, for, the, for the average person. And the problem is that it's not really porn the way that we s understand the his porn historically to be. It shows people doing sexual acts, but it's not, nobody's getting paid necessarily. It's not being done and produced and, and organized. A person records a video of, of themselves. It could be themselves masturbating. It could be having sex with somebody else. It shares that with somebody else. We usually call the perpetrator. It's a very serious word. Um, who then uploads it to a website. Um, and oftentimes with descriptions that, that you like. So sometimes it can be something quite innocuous, such as a hot girl having sex with me or, or me fucking a hot girl, whatever the case may be. Sometimes it can be a lot more malignant and it could be, you know, Honza Cervenka, naked, what a slut. And so then, you know, you Google my name and the first thing you, you see is this because it's on a porn website, it's probably visited uh, more often than my LinkedIn profile. <laughs> just because, um, so the problem, legally speaking, is that there, there were many steps that led to this video being online. And oftentimes, all of them, other than the very final one, I consented to. Um, but it's the act of actually putting it on the internet for everybody to see. Hey, some porn studios now try to emulate webcam porn uh, style of shootings because to many people that's what, what they look for. And so there's no way for the consumer necessarily to know authoritatively. So we've seen an influx of people coming to us with, with revenge pornography problems a few years ago, and, and it's reached such a scale.